One of the things that you have to remember that when you're put into a stressful situation, you're going to revert back to your training. This applies to all human beings. So along those lines, when we're talking about home defense, we need to have a plan. We need to have a plan to deal with the different types of scenarios that we may encounter in our home. We're going to refer to this as an emergency action plan. Obviously, we're going to deal with it in emergencies. We're going to get into action, and it's our plan. First thing that you need to do is you need to identify the fact that there is an emergency occurring. There's some type of hostile intrusion into your home, be it that you've arrived home from dinner and observed the fact that your home has been invaded by someone or a burglar, or you could be in your home and be awake, watching television, having dinner with your family, someone breaks in. You could be asleep in your bed, snuggled all nice in bed, and someone breaks into the house. You need to immediately identify these scenarios and have a plan to deal with each one. More importantly, you need to make sure that your family is aware of these different scenarios and how they are going to react to each and every single one. One of the most important things that you need to have is some type of code phrase or code word that tells your family, we're in a crisis situation, put the plan into action. It doesn't have to be complicated. It can be one word such as avalanche, uh, something that everybody knows what it means. My family, we use action plan, go. Action plan, go! It tells my family what I want them to do and I want them to do it right now. Each member of your family needs to have a specific set of instructions to follow during the implementation of this plan. For instance, if you have an adult member of your family, they may be designated to notify authorities by dialing 911. Your younger children, they, their only responsibility may be to get to the safe room. But you need to have a backup member for each and every portion of the plan. For instance, if you find yourself alone, who's going to call 911? We'll deal with that later in the training, but I just wanted to outline the plan for you so that we can push on from here. Let's discuss an example of an emergency action plan. For instance, you use the code word, you get your family into motion. Now it's imperative that your family understands that when they hear that code word, they hear that code phrase, they don't hesitate. They don't stop and ask, are you sure? They don't stop and ask, what should I do? They should know that if you use that code word or that code phrase to get into action immediately, not question you, and put the plan in place. What are some of the responsibilities for your family members in an emergency action plan? As a senior member of my family and the primary protector, my responsibility immediately is to arm myself and protect my family. I'm going to protect their line of retreat to the safe room and make sure that they get there safely. And then I'm going to put myself in a position to defend that safe room with my life if necessary. My wife is the primary communicator. Her job, gather up the children, get them to the safe room behind my protection and immediately go for that phone and notify authorities. My children's only responsibility is to get into that safe room with their mother, hunker down, be as quiet as possible, and follow directions from me or from my wife. Now with that said, everyone also has to have a backup plan. What happens if I'm not home and the plan needs to be put in place? We just push down one member. My wife becomes a primary protector. She knows to arm herself. The children know to get to the safe room on their own. My oldest daughter then becomes the primary communicator. So you have to have responsibilities for each member of your family, but you have to have a backup for each member's responsibilities.